Hello, B1 family, and welcome to the YouTube channel, The Big Black American Secret. My name is Daniel Jackson, and um, today I, I want to use, uh, I want to take a minute and show you a in-your-face example of not only racism, but what America thinks of black people in this one instance. It... it I want you to just kind of follow my lead as I, as I point out certain things to you. Um, and it, most black people growing up in America are completely clueless uh, to the to one, the system of racism, white supremacy and the effects of racism on their personal lives. And, 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 and we are negatively affected every day, but we simply don't know it. And uh, most of you who are familiar with this channel and you've heard my well, my story. Um, about racism that affected me personally I, I I'll spend a few minutes after I read the goal of this channel um, and go into it a little bit because it might give you a little insight to maybe something that you're dealing with on your regular uh, life and, and things you, you're going through but the goal of this channel is to build an unstoppable army of knowledgeable black melanated people in America and around the world that understand that we as melanated people have one enemy worldwide and that enemy is the system of racism, white supremacy. Our mission through education is to replace this system with the system of freedom, justice, and equality as laid out by Dr. Francis Cress Welsey. We will need your help in building this knowledgeable army. You can help by subscribing to this channel, by donating to this cause through Cash App or PayPal, and by sharing the videos you watch here and any knowledge that is shared. In doing so together, we help fertilize the mentally enslaved, colonized minds of black melanated people worldwide, creating the perfect mental conditions for our children to grow up in a better, more balanced world. Now, the um, the gymnast, Simone Biles, who, you know, due to mental health issues, she, she chose to not continue to compete in the Olympics. Now... A lot of people, she's getting a lot of back, backlash from that, from a lot of white people specifically. Some black people who don't quite understand the system of racism, white supremacy, but a lot of people don't understand how mentally draining um, it is to be constantly beat down by the system of racism, white supremacy, especially if you don't understand it or see it in your face. I mean, you could have a lot of white friends, you could just be the most normalest person in the world. You know what I'm saying? And and think that, well, you know, racism, or oh, some people are racist, you know, and, you know, I, I don't have any racist friends. I don't really feel racism like that. I, I don't even want to hear nothing about racism because it don't, it don't affect me. I just want to love as many people as I can. And that's all fine and good. But the bottom line is this. It is negatively affecting you and your kids, whether you choose to think you're participating in it or not. It's just a byproduct of the system we live in. Now, my, my, I'm, almost, I'm, I'm not going to go through the whole story of me personally, but I grew up in the south suburbs of Chicago. Um, all black neighborhood, all black schools. I think we had one white teacher. So I didn't experience a lot of racism. Got grown, went to college, didn't really sense any negativity, no racism. Life being the way it is, I end up working, excuse me, at Kroger in the management position, assistant manager in Atlanta. Atlanta's a big black city. My upper management was black. And um, so didn't face a whole lot of racism. May have one or two instances where it was blatant, some situation went on. But as far as systematically speaking and not being pressured by it, I didn't feel it. I did not personally experienced the negative effects of the system of racism, white supremacy until I transferred. Well, I left Kroger and I got with another grocery ch uh, chain in South Georgia. Um, Bilo. Bilo, I believe at the time. They merged with Winn-Dixie. But anyway, so I was in, in, in middle Georgia in a little town called Sylvania, Georgia. Now, here I am an assistant store manager a big bald head black dude 
my, 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 my direct store manager, who was above me, was about 10 years younger than me, white guy. And people in the store, black and white, I was getting a lot of pushback from people when I asked them to do things. I came from a background that if you, um, if you didn't do what your manager told you to do or if you gave a lot of pushback, that was considered insubordination, which is a fireable offense. Completely fireable offense. I, ca I can't imagine me having the mindset of, you know, not doing what my manager say do or, or giving the, the attitude or the pushback to, to, to the way I was, was, was getting it in this store, right? So I didn't know what was going on because I, I was completely ignorant to the facts, right? Matter of fact, and I, I meant to mention this in, the, in one of the videos I tell this story, but most of the white people in the store, and these were subordinates, these were people who worked under me. You understand? These were department heads and, and, uh, and other employees. And they go, oh, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, can I call you Dan? I'm talking more than 95% of these white people wanted to call me Dan. My name is Daniel. I say, no, I prefer Daniel, you know, or Mr. Jackson. Mr. Daniel and Mr. Jackson be fine with me. Not knowing what they what they truly meant subconsciously. Dan means dumbass nigger. Now, when these white folks want to give you a nickname like Ken, Dan, think about it now. Ken, coon enough nigger. It, it, it's their way of putting your ass in a box without you knowing it. You think they being buddy-buddy with you. No, no. You're an ox. They putting a the ring in your nose so they can try to lead your ass around subliminally and subconsciously they might not even know that they're doing this but this is exactly what's going on it's a system it's subliminal it's it's amazing i just made a video about a week ago i want you to go check it out and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please subscribe like the video hit bell hit all so that you're notified when i go live or hit another video dr francis Cress wilson's video will be in the description as well it teaches you all you need to know about the system of racism white supremacy um, but anyway, you know, so the area, can I call you Dan? And I never, I, I've never, I've never liked being called Dan. I just, it just seemed like white to me. It, Dan, Dan, don't call me Dan. You, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know about that dumb ass nigga thing till after I left the store. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't, I wasn't like, yeah, call me Dan. But anyway, um, so I'm getting a lot of pushback from these people. I ask them, what, you know, to do the job and, you know, I'm very, I'm very professional, very you know, I'm, I'm very professional, very, um, how can I put this? Um, I'm not over the top, a friendly type of person, but I am very cordial. I'm very respectful, but I am direct. I'm the three, I, I provide the three F's. I'm fair, firm, and friendly when it comes to business. Always have been, always will be. So in Atlanta, Firm, fair, and friendly, no worries. People get their job done because my upper management has my back. They're looking out for the company's interest. There is no obvious racism going on. In middle Georgia at this place, my my manager right above me is a white guy. I come in, I'm my same thing, and I talk to people, and I try to get things done. I feel some pushback. I go to him, and I go, um, let's just call him Bob. <laughs> hey, Bob getting a lot of pushback. I'm not quite understanding, you know, um, any point is anything you can kind of help me with? Well, no, no, Daniel, uh, maybe you just uh, need to spend a little bit more time and get to know people. You know, you're new and, you know, build a little rapport. I say, well, that makes sense. So I do it. I, I go and I spend a little bit more time, talk to them on a personal level. You know, hey, uh, John, how you doing? I understand you have a couple of kids that's, that's in high school. You know, how's your wife working out for you? Everything's good. Yeah. So I build a rapport, but still, Time go on a few weeks, pushback. So I call human resources because this shit is bothering me. Here I am doing what I know to do. Got I'm 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 you know working with my team that's under me to you know keep sales where they need to be, and I'm I'm just going about my day. But it's starting to wear on me because I'm not understanding why the pushback from both black and white employees. Completely fucking my brain up because I don't I don't know. So um, and here's one thing that happened that, that, that I'm, I'm going to share this story. Then I'm going to get to the, to the point of it. So one morning, you know, and, and, and as a store manager, we come in and then we check departments. We call them freshness check to make sure, that, you know, we're ready for the day's activity, whatever. 
So um, at this particular day, I come in at, I think, one o'clock. And so I'm going around to the departments. And I hit the first department. It's a deli department. Um, and so there was a, I counted about four just from a quick look of out of date meat, you know, the meat you cut, you shave to, to give the, you know, you, you weigh it and you give it to the customers. And so let's call this fellow Paul, assistant uh, manager. He's the assistant manager in that department. I, I, I you know, kind of say, Paul, I want to be quiet. You don't want to blow out, you know, like make a big broadcast. You got out of date meat in your department. I, I say, Paul, come here for a minute. Uh, you got a, a couple items in your department display here that's out of date. Why don't you stop what you're doing, you and a few people. Get together, take care of this, and then get back to what you're working on. And Paul said, nope, not going to do it. They should have took care of that this morning. It's not my, not my, he's, did he say it? It's not my responsibility or something. Uh, whoo, I said, that, that, he flat out told me no. So that really was like in my face, right? I said, well, wait, whoa. Well, I said, um, it, I said, for one, you're, you're the, you, you're the assistant department head. The department head is no longer here. You're in charge. It is your responsibility. Stop what you're doing. Take care of this. And then get back to what you're doing. I'm not going to do it. They should have took care of that this morning. I say, Paul, go to the office. We need to talk. So we go to the office. My boss is sitting at the desk. And, and so I say, hey, um, what are we naming him, Bob? I say, hey, Bob, tell me if I'm wrong. I go to the deli department. We got out of dates in the deli counter. I say, um, Paul, stop what you're doing. Take care of this situation and then go back to what you're working on. He tells me no. Um, true or false? Is insubordination a fireable offense? This dude act like the phone rung. He picked it up. And I'm standing there. Phone did not ring. No lights flashed or nothing. No bells went off. Oh, yeah. He act like it was a situation. He, he got the fuck out of that office. I'm like, what in the shit is this? What in the what? I said, all right. I said, okay. I say, listen, man. You go to your department. You take care of them out of dates. And I'll deal with you later. I think I might have cursed at him, but I forget the exact word. But anyway, I was pissed. So, um, I don't know, a few hours or the next day, um, I said, look, we need to write him up for insubordination. He goes, no. We, 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 we won't write them up. We'll just have a big meeting with all the departments and we'll talk about out of dates, you know, and, you know, we'll do it that way. So he, here's really his my boss was covering his own ass because he he came in in the morning. And he was supposed to do a few freshness checks. He didn't catch them out of dates. So he was covering his own ass. But, but that's not the whole point. So I'm still not understanding what I'm dealing with. So I call Human Resources, tell them the situation. Look, I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of pushback in this store. Um, I'm asking people to do things and they're dragging their ass. They're they just giving me a lot of pushback. Not sure what's going on. And the Human Resource lady go, well, Daniel, you've got a great team there. The team has always performed well. Um, you know, maybe you just need to, you know, build more rapport to people. And so I said, okay, Human Resource lady, I'm going to do my best. So I, I go a few more weeks at this. And at this time, my stress level is high. I'm drinking heavy. I'm gaining weight like crazy. Just stressed out, not knowing what's going on. And then all of a sudden, one day, I'm, I'm doing my duty in the store. I think I was scanning holes, you know, with this little scan gun. If there's an empty shelf, we, we find out if it's product in the store. And so um, this, this this white dude come in and good, he was in good spirits, you know, happy. You know, he, you know, he stopped me. He said, hey, um, let me ask you this. You got a, a, a new restaurant fitting to open up. The owner is a Mexican fella and his wife is a white, his wife is a black lady. What do you name that restaurant? And I'm halfway listening and paying attention. He said, Nacho Mamas and started laughing and walked off. He was in such good spirits and started laughing. It was kind of clever. I started laughing and then I caught myself. I said, whoa, <laughs> Nacho Mamas, a Mexican dude and a black lady. I said, that's some racist shit. How in the hell he's so comfortable, a white guy I never met, to come up to me and tell me a racist joke without thinking twice about it? I said, oh, I'm dealing with racism, right? These people ain't used to a black manager, right? Like, you know, this is, this is, this is uncomfortable for them. So I call him a resource and I say, hey, I'm excited because I'm thinking I got a solution to the problem. I, well, at least I didn't. 
I think I done figured out the problem. So I tell a human resource lady, hey, I think I know what the problem is, racism. I told the story. And she goes, well, no, no, Daniel, I don't think it's racism. The, man the assistant manager who was there before you was a, was a black fellow. I said, really? I said, well, what happened to him? Why is he not here? Does he still work for this, the company? She says, well, yeah, he still works for the company. And um, I said, well, awesome. I would love to talk with him, maybe get some ideas of what I can do better to to, 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 to help me manage better. She goes, no, you can't talk to him. I said, well, let me understand this. He still works for the company. He used to work here. He can help me solve some issues, but I can't talk to him. Well, Daniel, we don't think the issue is racism, so yeah, there's no need to stirring up something that ain't. That's not the issue, then you know. Yeah, I said, okay, him or you, so it's lazy, and then, you know, we hung up. So um, I'm. It's a good chance that this manager was a pushover, not a considered a a real black person. Not a. I, I'm a real black man. What do I mean when I say that? I don't him and haul. I don't kiss ass. I don't have to. And it ain't because of racism that I'm this way. I, I, I didn't grow up experiencing racism, so I'm just myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a bootlick. I never have been. I'm not an ass kisser. Never have been. Don't even know what that means. You understand what I'm saying? So this dude probably was polar opposite of me. I don't know. I never met him. She would never tell me his name or anything. But I'm going to assume if he did well, which he probably didn't, maybe he was like me. Maybe that's why he ain't that. Who knows? Anyway, system of racism, white supremacy will drive a black person mad. Now, long story short, all the stress. and Well, anyway, they transferred me about two days after that conversation. So um, and, 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 and white people will always say stuff like, well, um, it can't be racism because this black person is OK with it. See, it ain't. They don't understand that you got you got two different black people. The system of racism splits black people down the middle. You got your house Negro and your field Negro. They'll say, oh, well, this guy who was probably a house Negro, it's, 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 he's doing great. He's perfectly fine with the situation. So it can't be racism because you're both are black. <laughs> no, we ain't both black. I'm black. He just look black. He black looking. <laughs> he ain't be one. You feel what I'm saying? So the system of racism is just that. It's a system. It's invisible. And it operates best when it has a black face on it or it's invisible. Now, I'm going to show you something. We're going to get back to this uh, gymnast, uh, Simone Biles. And this woman, let me tell you what she is, in my humble opinion, is dealing with. And she might not even know she's dealing with it. But hopefully this video will get to her. If somebody know her, please forward it to her. She's dealing with the negative effects of racism, white supremacy. This lady did a move that no one else in the world can do. Being an Olympic athlete or an athlete in, in general is about pushing the envelope, being your best. To stand above the rest, to set the pole. You see what I'm saying? This woman did this move and all of a sudden the system of racism, white supremacy kicked in and go, no, that's an illegal move. If other people try that, they could hurt themselves. Um, nope. We can't give you credit for that. Do you know how devastating that, that is to a person who's worked the way she has worked? To, to, to tell her that because she is superior, she's discounted. And this is white fragility at its best. They, they know that they're going to catch hills going up to that level. So what do they do? They change the fucking rules. And they do this all the time, but they make us think we're the problem. That's why what I'm finna show you is so important. Now, I'm gonna turn this camera around and I don't want any copyright strikes. This is for education purpose only, fair use, okay? This guy has a very strong opinion of, of what Simone did. This man, I want you to put into your mind that he represents white, racist white America. And Simone Biles represents black America. When you're listening to him, I may pause it here there to go over a few things. But the goal of this channel is to destroy the system of racism, white supremacy, and replace it with a system of freedom, justice, and equality.
You understand? What I mean? So when examples like this are on the radar, I try to use them as um, tools, a teaching tool, teachable moments to show you something that you may have not have thought of. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna turn this camera around and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit play and I want you to listen and and, and we're gonna decode exactly what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? Think about this. This 2020, 2021 Olympics in Japan has gone to extreme lengths to silence black people so that we can't focus on the injustice that we, we, we're receiving. We can't uh, wear Black Lives Matter. We can't pump a fist. Athletes anyway. And so being a black person, you putting these kind of limits on me, why would I want to compete? There's no extra benefit in it for me. When you're a black person and you're in a position of high visibility, power, influence, influence and authority, you were given that statute to better your, uh, to, to, to make a difference for your people. You, were, you weren't given that position to um, be selfish. It, it's not just for you. Remember, house Negro, field Negro, or vice versa. It's only two, two mentalities. And then, of course, it's the gray area. <laughs> people who ain't made their mind of what they want to be. Now, um, and these people who are house Negroes, you, you can see them through what they do and their attitude. These people, we call them bootlicks, coons, um, white people's, black people's. You feel what I'm saying? They don't want, they don't push reparations under no circumstances. They're for um, things like, they for every cause under the sun except for what's best for black people and black people alone. They, they're good with the, 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 LBGT situations, you know, feminist movements, uh, Jewish situations, but they could kill us what's going on for their own people. You understand what I'm saying? These people are very dangerous. I call them Negropeans. These are black looking people with racist European mindsets. These people will tell you in a minute, cops aren't the problem. Cops aren't just killing black people all willy nilly. When the truth and I, it's in the news almost every day, you know? So, um, I think I've ran enough about that. Let me, let me turn this around and, and, and kind of show you what I need to show you. Okay. Thank you. Biles. I don't know her politics. I don't, I just know that she's, you know, shown on television a lot. I don't know if she was ever uh, sexually assaulted or abused. So I, I don't I don't know what she's been through. I, I seriously I mean See that. the flag on his hat? Uh, he represents racist white America. However, I'm gonna say this. Don't show up to the Olympics and compete if you're not ready for the big moments. Okay. He's saying, listen here, little nigger. If you're not gonna come here and represent America and represent America right, then you just need to stay your your black ass home. You understand? This is not high school. This is not college. This is the Olympics. It's bigger than yourself, Simone. So Simone Biles, who's obviously a very talented gymnast, decided not to compete in the gold medal competition. Now, she probably could have just competed and just kind of checked the boxes and they would have got a gold medal. Simone Biles says, this Olympic Games, I wanted to be for myself when I came in, and I felt like I was still doing it for other people, as she cried after the team event on Tuesday. So that just, it like hurts my heart, because doing what I love has been kind of taken away from me to please other people. Yeah, that's the point, Simone Biles. You're representing your nation, you selfish, you're selfish sociopath. Now, Simone Biles said, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say what she said, I'm going to sum it up. She says, Basically, I'm a gymnast. I got into this because this is what I love to do. So I wanted this to be about me. But, and she didn't say these words, but I'm sure she was thinking it. But I've, I do a move that they will not give me credit for. A move that sets me so far ahead of everybody else. 
They script that from me. And they want me to represent America, this racist country that puts limits on me, that puts its knee in my neck. This causes graves amount of depression in people, in black people, because we we so love our country. We so want to do what's best for our country. And they force us to into mental depression and physical pain. But this is this is America telling you exactly what it feels about you little black people. You kidding me? Today, it's like, you know what? I'm not going to do something stupid and get hurt. It's just not worth it. It's yeah, I don't care about you nigger getting hurt. You just need to go out there and be a good little nigger and um, win, win this goal for, for your country. Especially when you have like three amazing athletes that can step up to the plate and do it. So you know who has the gold medal? Russia. Russia. I have to go look at these four foot 11 Russian Olympi Olympians chewing on their gold medals, smirking at the Americans. I'm not okay with that. Yeah, racist white America. I'm sure you ain't okay with that. This is what all black people need to do. We need to not help America win not one more goddamn goal if America don't cut that check for reparations, for stolen wages, stolen labor, slavery. We don't need to play not one more damn sport because these people are shit without us, especially in sports. We need to understand our power. And then we need to withdraw financially and then come together together on our own with our own and, and, and put this put this country back to where it needs to be. OK. But honestly, that's where we're headed. We are raising a generation of weak people like Simone Biles. Again, if you want to be. A nation of weak people, so. Um, racist white America has not repaired us financially, but they send millions of dollars in the form of reparations to Jews, to Palestine, to Japan, to other, they've paid other people who have not gone through the hell that we have on this continent. Oh, but we supposed to be good little slaves and just, oh, do what they tell us to do. And make them proud with us getting nothing in return. Do you see the hypocrisy? Do you see the racism? If she got all these mental health problems, don't show up. If she's an incredible athlete. Of course she's an incredible. If she's got all these mental problems, don't show up. When you've given her the mental problems. <laughs> she was perfectly fine before y'all started um, changing the bar. By telling her that her moves are not going to be used. Imagine if, if America would have said, hey, no, this is awesome, and put their stamp on that move. See, they didn't want her, that move, to restrict other white American gymnasts in the future. But at the same time, what it did is this. It caused her mental anguish, and now she withdrew for her own health and safety reasons. But now this bigot represents racist white America. So take a look, racist white America. This is your ass on display. And I hope my black brothers and sisters, especially you uh, coon ass Negroes, get the wake up call. Incredible athlete. I'm not saying, I just said she's probably the greatest gymnast of all time. She's also very selfish. She's immature and she is a shame to the country. Everything he just said, I turned it back on racist white America. America, racist white America is very selfish, very immature for not even thinking about paying us reparations, lying to us educationally on, on every level, killing us, and very much a sociopath as a country when it comes to black people. We are terrorized by this government, and most part, we don't even know it. She's totally a sociopath. Of course she's a sociopath. No, Anderson America's a sociopath. sociopath. What kind of person skips the gold medal match? Who does that? It's a sh Who does that? It's fed up black Americans.
who have not gotten reparations from you racist white people. Fame to the nation. You just gave a gift to the Russians. And we'll keep giving gifts to anybody who else, who, 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 who want to compete against America until America pays us for, for stolen labor, i.e. slavery. Listen up, racist white America. Shit has changed and it's going to continue to change. Please understand this. Don't show up. If you're not ready for the big time, we got thousands of young female gymnasts that would love to take the place. Thousands. Simone Biles just showed the rest of the nation that when things get tough, you shatter into a million pieces. No, she didn't shatter into a million pieces. She woke up. She woke up and realized that she was giving a heart to a country that, that don't even give a shit about her. That's not shattering. It's called waking up, white boy. Please understand. Because that's the way it's going to be for all of us going forward. We're not doormats to you wait just wipe your feet on and just use you know what there's a lot of times that you step up to the plate even though you don't want to do it even though that it's against everything in your body he just said something so powerful and I, i'm gonna make him eat his words for it or take his own advice you have to sometimes step up to the plate even when you don't want to racist white america and cut that motherfucking re uh, reparations check to step up to the plate and cut that check. <laughs> Instead, Simone Biles just broke one of the great American values and virtues. Current great American, great American values and virtues. Oh, let's see what those are. Uh, nigger, do as you told. Uh, nigger, take this beating with a smile. We're the greatest country in the world because we're white and we control our niggers like we control our dogs on a leash. Courage and bravery. It was all about herself. She's a disgrace. In all races, white America, you're a disgrace and you're on public display. And I hope the world see you for what you truly are. Racist, bigot idiots who don't understand shit. Now, when it comes to examples, of in your face America pointing its finger at you as a black person and going, you need to be a good nigger. You need to do as you're told. You know, you're given all of these great opportunities because you're an American. If you don't love this country, you need to get the hell out. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. What you don't understand is, let me turn my fan off for a second. Excuse me. No, racist white America, what you don't understand is this. This ain't your country. Black Americans are the only true Americans. You are thieves and you're imposters. The black American is the aboriginal American. The Indians in our history book were put there by racist white America. to assume the position of natives first peoples, but they're not the aboriginal Americans. The natives first people are immigrants as well that came from Asia, crossing the landmass, the Bering Straits, about 13,000 years ago, according to leading paleontologists. So no, they're not aboriginal to this landmass, but you black man and woman are. You are from the dirt of this continent. The soil, the air, the salt, the minerals formed over millions of years and produced you, the black American. In Africa, the soil, the air, the salt, the atmosphere, that geological location formed together and made black Africans in Africa. Australia, same thing. The air, the oil, the surf, the geographical location of that, that continent came together over millions of years and formed the aboriginal Australians. Each continent creates unique and different humans with different phenotypes, but all melanated, all melanated because of the sun. We're carbon beings. Our phenotypes are different because we come from different soil and mixture types. Think about this. In Australia, no, let me start, let me go back a little bit. In America, 
And on other continents, you have creatures like, you know, rabbits, you know, guinea pigs. Here is the power in what I'm saying and the, and the facts. The scientific facts and the visual facts. Australia produces kanga fucking rules. Only in Australia are, are kangaroos produced. That landmass, that mineral oil produces from its dirt and soil and water, produce kangaroos. A kangaroo is a, it's like a horse, dog, rabbit mixture creature. Indigenous to only Australia. You see what I'm saying? The black American, indigenous to America. The African, indigenous to Africa. Now, a lot of people believe in the Pangaea, where the continents were worse once together and then broke apart. Who knows? That could have that could possibly have happened millions of years ago. But it would not change what I'm saying. If a continent was together and then it separated, the dirt, the oil, and the new geographical location of where it is will start to grow plant life. And then after that, mammal life. So it can eat the plants. So this landmass is our landmass. The out of Africa theory was created by racist white Europeans to gain control of America and Europe. I'm telling you what I know, people. We have been hoodwinked, misdirected, miseducated. So reparations is only for slavery, lost labor. We'll deal with this other shit at a later time. Because we are the landlords of this continent. You feel what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to prove to you before I get off this video. i give you a little bit of snippet of who you really are and how you could research a little bit for yourself. Okay? I hope you're ready. Now, if you can, find a one cent copper penny that matches the color of the back of your hand. Don't have to be exact. Be kind of close like this one. Right? And now I want you to Google something on your, on your computer or your cell phone a little later once you get off of this thing. Go to Google and type in um, what I'm going to type in. And it's going to be eye-opening. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the, the YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, share, and hit the, uh, all, uh, hit the bell and hit all so that you'll be notified of new videos or when I go live. You're going to type in 1828, which is a year. 1828 definition of American. Now, what's the significance of this definition? I'm going to tell you, the significance of this definition is, one, the year, 1828. Now, in it, the, the system of racism, white supremacy that we are now in is only about 100 and I think 62 years old. I, I, I go over this in two other videos that I taped just recently. But um, I want to say 162 years old. Yes. In 1859, Charles Darwin wrote a book. And the full title of the book is is has something to... Anyway, it's, it's dealing with natural selection and... Um, Natural Selection and the Origin of the Species. Okay? That book was circulated heavily starting in 1859, which planted in the minds of, of white-skinned Europeans that they were genetically superior to all other peoples on the planet. Now, why is that important? At the time, you had white and black Europeans. 1859. Six years before the Civil War ended, white people got in their minds that they were superior, genetically speaking. This is the same year the Ku Klux Klan was formed. The white Europeans and everybody was in cahoots from the government on down. They got busy eliminating the black European. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Go watch my other video. But anyway, long story short, uh, remember, we, we finna, I'm going to show you a definition that's going to tell you exactly who you are 
and exactly why you've been going through the hell you've been going through on this in this on this continent and in the world. Okay, this is um, the definition of American in the year 1829. 1828, I'm sorry. American, a noun, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals, that's the people from the dirt, or copper colored races. That penny is made out of copper. Found here by the Europeans. Now this part is this is the this is the shit right here. This is the this is the reason your ass is being subjugated. But now applied to the descendants of Europeans, his his children's born in America. Let me read that again. But now apply to the children of Europeans born in America. What do white people always tell other people when they get mad at them if they foreign? You need to go back to where you come from when they not from here. Every other group of people got something in front of that American. You got Asian Americans, African Americans, Japanese Americans, Jamaican Americans. You get the gist. But when it comes to white people, they're just American. You see what I'm saying? Now, this definition is the year 1828. The system of racism, white supremacy didn't kick in till 1859. We didn't know this. We thought this should have been going on for hundreds and hundreds and maybe thousands of years. But no. Before the system of racism, white supremacy, it was European domination. And there were both white Europeans and black Europeans who came here and were dominating over the black Aboriginal American. Now, the reason this definition is important is because it came before Darwin wrote that book. This this dictionary was already printed. They can't unprint it. They cannot no longer hide it. Now, they have been hiding it because if you just look up American and don't go to the year 1828, it'll just talk about a melting pot of many different people living here. You see what I'm saying? But it don't tell you about the Aboriginal Americans because they told us that, oh, oh, no, many people will tell you that there were black people here. When Christopher Columbus got here. Oh, but they died off. They were killed. No, no, no. They was not killed. They were enslaved. S slavery started in, on this continent in the 1400s. As a matter of fact, let me, because they told us slavery started here in America in 1619 with those first 20 odd Africans in Jamestown, Virginia, right? No, no. Slavery in America. I'm sorry, the transatlantic slave trade was not only told to us in reverse, it was a cover story for the real slave trade that took place on this continent. Because they told us what? They couldn't enslave the Indians, they were run away, knew the land, and then couldn't be found. So they had to go get West African slaves. So I'm going to type in something here. I'm going to show you exactly what trade slave went on, the slave trade that took place on this, this land mass. It's called the International Indigenous Indigenous American Slave Trade. And of course, indigenous is the same as Aboriginal. It's no difference, okay? So, European colonists purchased indigenous people as slaves as part of the international indigenous American slave trade. International indigenous American slave trade, which lasted from the 15th century, which is the 1400s, until the 19th century, which is the 1800s. This slave trade started sooner, lasted long. In fact, it started with Christopher Columbus in 1492. Okay, so we have been viciously mislabeled as African-Americans, thanks to um, Jesse Jackson in the 1980s. Yeah, he coined that phrase, African-American. And, and that's why everything you read that's, that's been recently written or rewritten has, whenever it's got a black person, it says African-American, when that's just not who we are. You know what I'm saying? So people, that's just a snippet. Join this channel. Um, like this video, share this video, hit subscribe, hit bell, hit the, hit the, hit the all, um, hit the bell icon and then hit all so that you'll be notified when I go live or um, put out other videos. It is so important you know who you are.
Talk to your oldest living relatives. Do your own genealogy um, because the paper documents exist. They 100% they ex uh, exist, okay? Now, the people who started slavery on this landmass, remember there were black Europeans and white Europeans, were Sephardic Jews and Moors in the 1500s who were expelled out, who, who was kicked out of Spain. Matter of fact, on the same day Christopher Columbus set sail, Sephardic Jews and Moors were being expelled from Spain. A lot of them went to France, a lot of them went to England. And um, England, and, England and France wanted to get in on that sugar plantation money that Spain was making. So they gave land grants, hundreds of thousands of acres, to Sephardic Jews and Moors, which are black people, to set up um, plantations here in the, in the colonies to feed the slaves uh, to the plantations in, um, in the islands, in the Caribbean islands. I, I'm not going to get into this in this video because that wasn't, it's only about, I want to talk about the uh, gymnast um, Simone Bow. But you do need to, I take every opportunity I can get to, to tell my people who they truly are and some steps that they could take to start to learn who they are. Because again, we are not West African slaves. The slave trade was told to us in first in reverse. In fact, our people were taken from America to Sierra Leone, West Africa, to Spain, to uh, Europe, all over. Big shell game. And a lot of the West Africans near and around Sierra Leone are native. They're here. They're from us. Matter of fact, look at the, the <laughs> I just saw this myself. Matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can pull this up. Some shit. Once you learn what you know, it, it's gonna. It just blows your mind. What you, what you, what you, what you start to see. But this is incredible. This is so incredible. When I said uh, West Africans were taken from here and sent to to there. <laughs> Watch this. I'm gonna see if I get a good picture of this because it. I just saw this today. I promise you. Until today, I would never seen these people. Okay. Um, and it's the, it's the Nigerian, and if I can spell this right, Nigerian um, Olympic team, basketball Olympic team, Nigerian Olympic basketball team. Two thousand twenty-one, and I hope I get lucky, because they was all just coming out, and it was like, okay, come on, please just have them. Man, I hope. let's see. Come on, Nigerian basketball team hopes for Olympic glory. And if I can't find them, then y'all can look them up yourself. But these people look like, they look like us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so you might be thinking, well, they did say that they brought slaves from Stream West TV Africa. Plus live channels with no hidden fees. From West Africa to here. Good TV. Try it free. No, I just told you it was in reverse. They took our people from here to West Africa, Sierra Leone, West Africa. Uh, in fact, um, Sierra Leone, West Africa was a pirate hub. It was a place where pirate ships hung out to to do mischief and to transport slaves. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, that's where they come from. Um, so I, I want to see if we can see the lineup. Of the, 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 I, it, I swear, I saw these people come out, and it was like, man, them dudes look like American. Uh, don't think I'm going to have luck people because I want to get a shot of them coming out of the, the, the locker room yeah like I said I, I'm, I, hopefully I get lucky but you know because when I saw these these guys, I'm like, what? They look just like Americans. <laughs> like us. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, uh, I'm so pissed off at myself. Yeah. But anyway, if y'all get a chance and you can see the whole team, the Nigerian basketball team that's representing Nigeria, it, I'm like, man, this is crazy. But anyway, I didn't mean to go off on that tangent. If you get a chance, look that up. But anyway, um, black people, we have to understand. And, and, and when I say black, don't get me wrong. Black is not a color. It is, you know, just... What? Okay. Because a lot of a lot of um, Aboriginal people get very upset, you know. Say we sh we shouldn't call ourselves black because we're Aboriginal, we're indigenous to this land, and that's true. But here's what they may not be focusing on. Here's what they may not be getting. It is the racist. It's, it's the system of racism, white supremacy component. Due to the system of racism, white supremacy, we're on team black. There are two teams. There's racist white people around the world and then there's black people around the world because of the system of racism white supremacy we're on team black our skin color is our uniform and before you knew who you were you considered yourself a black person so you can't forget that i get i, I do what i do on a daily basis to help spark the genetic memory of my people because in a in a war you need warriors you need people on your side of the chessboard. You understand what I'm saying? You can't just be putting in your mind, oh, I know who I am and fuck everybody else. No, that's very selfish. And you're going to get us all killed. So don't be like that. No, we're on team black. We're B1, black before everything. If we can all understand this, that we're at war. And in order to win the war, we're on team black. We're all melanated Aboriginal people from different continents on this whole landmass. But due to the system of racism, white supremacy, when a, when a racist white person see a black person, he don't give a damn what continent you're from. He just see a black person, the enemy, who has to destroy your genes. Okay? Please understand. Black, we, we can't run from it. We have to use it use it it's our uniform given to us by the creator hope you understand that that's some simple shit okay so we got to stop fighting amongst ourselves and we come together on what matters most the fact that we're at war the fact that we're all melanated and subjugated by the system of racism white supremacy and that we're going to destroy this system and replace it with the system of freedom justice and equality so I need all melanated black people to stand together as a fist and we knock this bitch out. On that note, I am going to end this video and I hope you um, learned something from it. I hope it was impactful to you for, to some small stint. And uh, please, again, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell and hit all. Very important. We're building a team of, what, what, what did my thing say? We're building a team of knowledgeable, melanated black people around the world and in America that we can help destroy and replace the system of racism, white supremacy with the system of freedom, justice, and equality. And on that note, I bid you farewell until next time.